People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You already know who it is. It is Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. Guys, I actually just went on a on a run, on a run. Oh my god, I'm stumbling over my words again. I just went on a run and I was literally just hauling ass right down the street. So, oh my god, I'm all over the place. So, anyways, what a run that was. What a day that was. And you know what? Big shout out to everyone who is listening to me around the world because yesterday I just had the best day in my podcast what, more than 800 days history. Yeah, I had a bunch of downloads and a bunch of plays. So guys, thank you so much for everything that you've given me. And for all of you who are listening to me around the world, man, it means so much to me. <sighs> With that being said, guys, let's stay, let's stay on topic. Let's stay true. Let me stay true. Let me talk about how I lived through the first five lessons of Napoleon Hill's Law of Success. Now, remember just yesterday, I went over the definite chief aim. I went over self-confidence. I went over, of course, the habit of saving, leadership, and imagination. So let me tell you how this all ended up becoming, uh, I guess, part of my life. So definite chief fame. Remember, I went over the bullet points, right? Find out your major aim in life. Write out a clear, concise statement of your aim. Write out, write a map or maps through which you intend to attain or attain the object. Oh, God damn it. The object of that aim, uh, form an alliance. Uh, have people sign that alliance or sign that statement along with you so they understand your object of your definite chief aim, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, with that being said, guys, what's my aim? What's my major aim in life? You know, when I first came to Thailand in 2013, I didn't have a name. I didn't know what I was doing. I just heard, you know, everyone saying, hey, you know, well, not everyone, but my intuition told me to come to Asia. And it's really, really funny because I'm like, okay, my intuition told me to come to Asia, yet I had one of the most difficult times living in Thailand, you know, the first couple, you know, first two to three years. Well, actually, you know, even going through everything I've been through, it just basically on a, I guess you could say on a monthly basis and whatnot, I always see the things, I always see the faces of people doing things to me, but I didn't know if the, I didn't have a definite chief aim, regardless of all that, I didn't have a definite chief aim. So it wasn't until I started applying these laws that I figured out my aim in life. So, of course, I have the key of living, the law of attraction right here. Jack Canfield and D.D. Watkins. You know what? I actually wrote down my definite chief aim in here about five years ago, if I could actually go get through this. But you know what? It's amazing because the thing is, you're going to keep redefining and figuring out what you want to do. And about what? What was it? Back, what, 2015, I actually wrote it down. And it's so funny looking back at my handwriting three years ago. I said to inspire on stage and through great enthusiasm about personal development and being the change. And that hasn't changed so much because, of course, I still want to do my TEDx. I'm doing it on a world stage in terms of people listening to me all around the world. But the thing is, I've applied education to it because I'm like, OK, well, you know what? I need to monetize my passion. And I didn't know, uh, you know what, even before uh, watching Gary V, I already knew that I had a gift within me because I created a curriculum at my old job, whereas they were able to profit probably more than 10 to 15 million baht. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars because of what I did. And so then I started realizing my unique ability to converse, to present, to inspire, to enthuse. You know, all those different things and all these different factors that I'm going to be factoring in with the next few podcasts that are coming up, coming out over the next few days. And that's when I realized everything that I've been aiming for, it all coincides with each other. So we got the education, we got the personal development, we got the speaking, we got the health. Everything is put together. That's how you monetize your passion. So I do this through academics. I do this through voice. Of course, traveling and being part of these Spartan races, that is one of the biggest factors in my life too. But you know what? Just this morning, I woke up and I went on a run. Instead of running on the treadmill, I ran down the street. People looked at me crazy, didn't give a damn. I pushed through the burning sensation that was going through my calves for whatever reason because these dilapidated sidewalks. And you know what? I was so free. For those 15 to 20 minutes when I clocked in that two mile, I was so free because I love to do that. And so that I'm living my purpose every day. I wake up. I work out. I teach at the break of dawn, you know, probably in the next hour I'll be teaching. And then after that, come back home, record a couple of videos, of course, do a couple of blogs. And I'm going to go to another place, meet a doctor. This is living to me. And see, Earl Nightingale, he said, the person who is successful is the, like the, the housewife who wakes up every day 
enthusiastic about cleaning her home, about the man that goes to his business every day skipping, about, you know, you know the people who play basketball every day, uh, you know, from ages, what, I guess you could say five all the way up till they're about 40, 42, 43, whatever, they probably retire by then. But you guys get the point. The person who loves doing the thing he does every day over and over and over. That's success. So how do I live it? Guys, I just told you exactly how I live it. And you know what? Now my my motivation, my enthusiasm, my inspiration, my everything that I'm putting out there, it's starting to rub off on people. And so I love it so much because, of course, I get this... Uh, a wonderful Malaysian girl that I just met. Uh, she, I'm going to be meeting with her in person along with someone else. Well, not at the same time, but I'm going to be doing a podcast with him in Kuala Lumpur. And she's like, I want you to be my mentor. I want, I want to know what you know. I want to write and do this and do that. And that is the most beautiful thing in life. When someone actually comes to you and says, hey, I want to know what you know. It's crazy because I'm going to keep saying it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy because, oh, my family, my family, you know, I thought one day they would actually wake up and say, hey, I'm going to go do and listen to what Arsenio has to say. And I'm going to go listen to this podcast. I'm going to see what he has to say. What is he doing that's different from my life? But my family just never wanted to answer. You cannot make or make horses or you know you cannot make anyone do anything in life guys all you could do is just be the change and that's what i'm doing right now every day i wake up until i go to sleep i am the change that i want to see in the world so that's my purpose going into lesson two self-confidence how did i develop this Oh my god well you know what i did a podcast you know what i wrote this on the blog which you guys can actually click in the description did a podcast with actor t marie did uh did a podcast with her about a year ago and t marie uh she is one of the most wonderful beings i've ever met in my life and of course she lives in hollywood she's an actor uh she does so many different tv plays and skits and you know she's oh my god what she's doing right now and seeing her life unfold on instagram and see all these opportunities come to her i celebrate the hell out of her and you know what if we go back to what Gary Vee says, you, you know, well, this show, I'm not even going to mention him, but this show, this one guy said, you know what? Some people say we're so caught up in our own business that we should celebrate others. And Gary Vee was like, that's a ridiculous philosophy. Pretty much downplayed it. But the thing is, if you celebrate other people, you ultimately win because there's too much jealousy going on out there. And this is what happens with so much of my life and trying to tell people, give people, you know, different insights and whatnot. And they say, I don't need no help. I don't need this. I, don't. I say, okay. So I stopped doing that about three years ago. And so if one day people do come to me and say, hey, you know what? I really want to know what you know. Uh, then, of course, ultimately, I'm going to do that. So through self-confidence, uh, you know what? I had confidence coming to Thailand, but that all of it was stripped away. Obviously, you guys know the story that you, the black man, the low class, the pimp, all that, all that ridiculous jargon, all that BS. Um, it was all stripped away. I was nothing more than a color here. And that's when I engraved into my mind. I seared into my brain and it created my reality. And then I think I was going through a lot of withdrawals. I was going through a lot of anger, a lot of pain. Uh, you know, I was very jealous of Anglo men who came here, especially the ones that were between 25 and 35 and worked out because they could have everything they want. And I mean, I, how did I get over that affirmations because that self depreciation, it was killing me literally. And you know what? T Marie, she actually has that book out there in America on Amazon love for you now. And there's a lot of affirmations and pictures and things that people can do to get over that negative blueprint. Whatever they're suffering from. It could be a money blueprint. It could be a social blueprint. It could be a professional blueprint. Whatever it is. But it was a, it was about a week before I went to Vietnam back in 2016. I came across Jack Canfield's principle number five. Believe in yourself. And it made me cry. It made me cry because right then and there, that cape was taken off. And then I heard Wesley Chapman probably about a year, uh, probably about six months later. And Wesley Chapman, he was like, you know what? You need to put the victim to sleep and put the hero cape on. And when he said this, and he's like, oh, my God, you need to tell me about your story. Of course, this is a millionaire, and he helps so many different people because he's been through the same nonsense, too. <sighs> so I reestablished that self-confidence. And now, I don't give a damn how people look at me. It doesn't really matter. You know, uh, the negative reactions, all that, and, you know, triggering this and that. It doesn't matter. I know what I am. I know what I believe in. And so when I got my confidence back, it was over. 
And now, of course, what I'm building right now before my very eyes, this ridiculous, beautiful body. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah, just focus, focus. That body I'm building right now, God damn it, it's sexy. And you know what? I feel so confident. I'm not doing it for a goddamn soul out there. Now, I know how ridiculous people are out here. I've told so many stories. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people don't believe me. Y'all don't have to believe me. I don't give a damn. But people look at me in different ways in different areas. And I'm like, why are you looking there? You should be looking in my eyes. If you're going to look at me, look in my eyes. If you're walking past me, don't look down there. It's, it's, it's so many weird things that I see happen out here. And it's always the women. But the thing is, they hate me. But the thing is, what you looking down there for? You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. But you know what? It, it kind of, you know, I kind of blush. I say, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so it's funny. It's funny. Anyways, it's like like a freaking elementary school kid who has a crush on a girl. You know what I mean? But hey, listen, the strangers, they walk by me. They look in my eyes and then their eyes drop to a, 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 below the waistline for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe they're interested. I don't know. But you know what? That confidence, that, that's like, yeah, 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 that's goddamn right, you better look, no, 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 it's not like that, guys, I ain't trying to be all nasty, but I'm saying, you can see, not building an ego or anything, but it's literally saying to myself, Arsenio, everything that you basically put out to the universe between 2013, 14, and 15 was untrue, because these Thai women are looking at you in different areas, so not all of them are giving you those, ugh, disgusting black man looks, some of them are like, whoa, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's just we create our reality based on the opinions of others and then it destroys us and ultimately like leads to depression and so many other things. But man, oh, that was it. That was it. Th those those moments and me standing on the, you know, the sky trade and talking to people and doing this and doing that. Some people hold their prison. I don't give a damn. You know what? I'm just going to be myself. And I got my confidence back. I got my mojo back. I got my mojo back. It was always there. It got destroyed. And then I rebuilt it back up. And now, you know, hell, I, could, I see it every day. You know what? I walk home with my chest, held, you know, high and my chin high. And, you know, all these people of all different ages walking across me, and, you know, eye contact. And they drop them. And it's just crazy, you know? So anyways, man. I'm very, very grateful because, boy, I with all, all jokes aside, man, I went through hell and back psychologically, but it was all based on me. It had nothing to do with the outer reality and what terms of what I'm looking at right now. Nothing. It had to do with me. Build that confidence. Do those things that people tell you not to do because once you start doing that, oh, everything, and I mean everything, is going to change in your life, and I've said that so many different times. So, lesson number three, the habit of saving. I've always been... Uh, a saver, 2007, I remember um, a day before um, uh, the Transformers came out. Transformers, the first movie, 11 years ago. Uh, me and my brother got in a big argument. He was bitching at me for so many things, and I started crying like a little bitch. Excuse my language, no pun intended. But because it was always about money with him, always about money. And you know what? The only times that me and my brother actually got along was between 2009 and 2010 when he was actually living a very, very high life, being a smog technician, making a lot of different money, bought a Dodge Charger, did this, did that, didn't save a goddamn nickel. Because next thing you know, he ended up broke, back at a horrible ass job, got this taken away, this taken away, and then he became all jealous and envious of me because then he saw what was going through my life and what was happening and unfolding in my life. So it's amazing. I'm going to say that again. It's amazing because leading up to 2009, I was always an effective saver. I saved everything. Save a portion of what you earn every month. See, guys, I get paid from probably about five to ten different places. I can't even keep count. I need to keep count. Um, just so I know I'm getting paid from every place. Um, and you know what? I don't take out and do this and do that. I know that I have a $400 rent bill and I have a $30 power bill. And then, of course, my internet and my phone. And that's it. That's all I need to pay. Everything else is saved because nothing is ever promised tomorrow, ever. So just in case crazy shit happens and I'm able to make some moves, I'm able to make some changes and see a lot of you are out there just blowing money on so many different things and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You need to grab a hold of the habit of saving or I guess, you know, money is going to take control of your life. Leadership and the penalty of leadership. And so, what is it? What is it? I actually wrote this down. I actually wrote this down. 
and you know what leadership revolves around you know but it, you can't be you can't procrastinate if this and that and i actually you know read over everything but napoleon hill wrote this book he said i'm going to take it upon myself to say something to you that you will not like he actually said this to one of the guys that actually came into his uh no napoleon hill was actually trying to sell this man something in his office and then this man couldn't make a decision whatsoever he was just so indecisive Napoleon Hill said, you know what? I'm going to take upon myself to say something to you that you may not like or that you will not like, but it may be of help to you. He said, take a look at this office in which you work. The floor is dirty. The walls are dusty. The typewriter you are used. It looks like it's been used by Noah's Ark. Your pants are bagged at the knees. Your collar is dirty. Your face is unshaved. And you have that look in your eyes as if you are defeated. And so what I'm trying to say here is a lot of people. Have this look every day on the sky train. Hell, you could point them out in your society, wherever you are in the world. That look of defeat, that look of anger, that look of anguish, that look of resent. And people can ch- you people who have excellent intuition could pick it up real quick. And so when it comes to leadership, you got to realize that there is going to be a penalty of leadership also. And what I mean by that. Well, the thing is, the penalty of leadership is basically if you become a leader and you start helping a specific place, which I did in my last job, which I keep making good references to because, you know, it was a really big, big part of my life, three and a half years. But you know what? When I created that specific subject and all this, all these things started happening, and they started bringing in the wrong teachers who were out to like do uh, they had insidious agendas, insidious meaning very, very disgusting agendas. They all started hating me. They were like, how come Arsenia doesn't talk to me? Well, because actually my one of my students who's an entrepreneur who has two online businesses going to school in Singapore, she sent me a wonderful picture last night. And I love this picture so much because she's like, you know what? I saw this picture and I thought about you. And this is what happened going back to those teachers, because when I thought about it, I was like, oh, my God, this was so me even before I even read this quote. And the quote was, I can't afford to hang out with people who don't inspire me. I can't afford to hang out with people who don't inspire me. What is a 45 to an 85 year old man going to do for me? All the, all man, I'm telling you, I used to be in that little circle and they used to bitch, 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 bitch. They used to jump all over me like they knew everything. They used to make me feel bad. There were some times after conversations, I would be so angry because they would say, oh, well, you don't really know. You've got uh, like, what was it? A shower basin or something like that. Some British, some British saying, right? And I'm like, well, never heard of that. And then he just, and of course, the one that's a head teacher now, he's like, well, you've got to know. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Anyways, the penalty of leadership. When I became a leader and when I got out of that bitchy, itchy, bitchy, 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 itchy, itchy, bitchy party, boy, I became the talk of the town. Oh, he doesn't talk to us. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. People never talk to me anymore. Next thing you know, people started looking up, you know, different information of me online saying, oh, you know, he's making podcasts and he's talking about us. He's inferring and implicating us. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I'm going to be honest because now I can say that. Um, but at the same time, it was for the best of you. If you do not, if you look at everything literally rather than digging real deep to find out the true meaning and the underlying problem and cause of all your your woes, you're going to find the answer and you could probably get over this hump. But if you're 50 and you're dating an 18 year old girl, I got no respect for you. Got it? And so if you're 70 and your your wife is 35, I got no respect for you. If you came to a country to marry a woman, I got no respect for you. Got it? And so that's the penalty of leadership is that, well, I almost got fired two years ago. And then, of course, last year, I was already over it. I was already over it before everything happened. I was like, man, this job sucks. I'm getting out of here by next year. And so I did. Uh, but it came at a really, really great cause in terms of negative opinions and so many different things. But Just know when you're ready to become a leader and you're posting all these positive things online and you're trying to build up a a reputation and everything, there are going to be people out there who are going to try to destroy you. Do not be afraid. These are just trolls. And luckily, I haven't had anyone on my YouTube page or this or that talking to me or, you know, posted ridiculous comments or anything like that. Because, well, the thing is, I speak the truth because I am a leader. And so that is the end of, of course, number four. So, of course, I take it upon myself to um, to just be someone of influence, you know, and and of course, with that, you're going to have problems. It could be in the workplace, but luckily I'm no longer in that workplace and I'm going on to the biggest, bestest things in terms of my life, period. 
Ah, oh, but it's good to look back and say, wow, what was I thinking? Because in two years time, this is all going to be forgotten. And that's the funnest part about life. Because this is all part of the process. The process is beautiful. I love everything that just happened to me. Last year, the year before, the year before, the year before, the Thai society, this, that, this, that. Look at me now. Look at me now. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, anyways, lesson five, imagination. How, Guys, I didn't get these ideas out of nowhere. Now, back in 2013, 14, did I have, did I have ideas to do this and do that? Mm-mm. Did I know Jim Quick? No. Les Brown? No. The only person I knew was Bob Proctor. But he didn't have any necessary tools. He was just at, you know, doing presentations at places like Vima and this and that. And I was like, okay, well, is any of this going to ultimately help me? No. Okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to do this? Uh, there were no tools. There were no necessary things until I bought this book, The law, the Key to Living the Law of Attraction. Then I started writing down my goals. There was no actionable steps, but then I ended up meeting a Glenn Harrell. Not meeting him, but I actually met him in the store. Uh, the book. Yeah. Uh, then I started meditating. Once I started meditating, and it's not like the Buddhist meditation or anything. It's literally just a guided meditation going through the things he actually tells you to go through. I started having ideas. A lot of ideas. And you know what? I wrote down a list. I wrote down a list on my blog. You guys could check this out. But you know what? It all started with Paulo Coelho. Of course, the alchemist, this boy trying to find his alchemy, he, him wanting to give up on the entire journey, him being ambushed by different people and this and that. And well, the alchemist just kept saying, no, you need to get to the pyramids. Your alchemy is at the pyramid pyramids. And that's the ultimate goal. That's the purpose. See, we all get we all get obsessed with the, you know, macro here, macro there. But what's the ultimate purpose? You have to keep striving. And so that should be free online anyway, or you could get that PDF for free online. So go check that out. Then after that, I got the Lisa Nichols Abundance Now, or you could get the Jack Canfield's uh, Success Principles. Those helped me tremendously, especially Lisa Nichols. Those two books, and of course, I downloaded that meditation app by Glenn Harold. I started meditating and visual, you know, guided visualization and stuff like that. I made my 101 goals list back in 2015, which I need to look through today and see if I got any more goals. <gasps> Oh my god, I just realized. Oh damn, let me hurry up and look at that. Oh, what is it? I want 200 plays of what the yes, I got it. Oh, da- I just realized that. Oh my god. Okay, so I actually wrote down in my book, I don't know when, it had to be sometime last year that I wanted at least 200 plays in one day uh on my podcast. And last night I got 300. So, <laughs> yeah, and you know what I'm going to write down now? 500 plays. See, you see how this works, guys. These are the you got to have yourself a book. 101 goals, write down everything and don't be afraid. Don't fear the fear and say, "Well, I don't know how I'm going to get that." How you know or how you're going to get it is none of your business. Just write it down. Oh yeah, baby, I'm feeling good this morning. Anyways, find affirmations on YouTube. Be inspired. Be inspired is a YouTube channel. And you know what? He has a lot of different uh, affirmations that he has uh, done himself. Over the past couple of weeks, he has two videos on affirmations. Listen to that every morning. Go into the shower. Listen to it. Get yourself a little speaker or listen to it on a, some kind of speaker or whatever you, whatever it may be. But just listen to it. And then, hey, you got you to gotta learn how to stop worrying and how to start living. How to influence people. How to, you know, not, not create enemies and stuff like that. You have got to introduce yourself to Dale Carnegie. And then after that, you got to get get rid of one shitty friend and add a good friend. Now, I've gotten rid of a lot of, you know, there was one girl by the name of Lisa. I'll say it out there. Um, me and her, we were friends for more than 10 years. And then because I canceled my trip, because she ended up getting a boyfriend, I knew what was going to happen. Because anytime she gets a boyfriend, she disappears. She had a boyfriend a long time ago, and she disappeared, like, completely. Uh, and then she popped up after they broke up. And she's like, oh, hey. And, of course, that time I was like, oh, well, you know, okay, whatever. We could talk. But now she has another boyfriend. She disappeared again. And after I canceled my trip, I knew it was going to be the end of the friendship. I didn't know it was going to be the end of the friendship. I thought she'd be angry for about a month. And then we'll have a talk. But, no, five, six months later, I was like, you know what? All right. I'm no longer – I'm I'm just no longer going to have you in my life. If you want to come forward in the next 20, 30, 40 years, whatever, I don't really care. But you know what? I'm moving on. But before that happens, if I somehow make it – and I become a massive influence, don't talk to me. I'll be like, oh, so why are you talking to me now? I sent you a message on Christmas and New Year's telling you how wonderful of a friend you are and how we had such a mix-up and we should talk about it, and you never responded. And it's goddamn damn near April now. So I took off Facebook. That's right. I dropped that shitty friend. Because a longtime friend, 
or I guess you could say one of those, uh, I w- what was it, a lifetime relationship, like I have with my best friend Andre, um, uh, in New York and whatnot, I've mentioned him a couple of times on my podcast, uh, these lifetime relationships, I don't, I never knew that they could just end like that. And I thought Elisa and I would definitely, you know, we're going to be going on for a long, long, long time. But the thing is, in American society, when a woman gets a, a boyfriend, they disappear from the whole friendship thing. All of them. Well, maybe from my college, okay? Um, uh, where I went to school because uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess that's just the whole thing out there in America. So it's very unfortunate. Uh, it is a little bit sad and whatnot, but at the same time, I'm very, very grateful for it because me and her, but I can't erase the memory of her, her and I going to Hawaii, having the most amazing trip ever. Uh, then of course, Bally trumped it just by a small head or a small hair. Um, me and her going to here, going to Sedona, doing the hiking, doing this, dealing with this and that. Those were all outstanding and beautiful memories and I can never erase them and I never will because they are just wonderful. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you're just going to have to come – you're going to have to make a decision whether or not, hey, are we going to continue being friends? I'm 100%. What are you? You're zero? Okay, listen. Best of luck in your future on divorce. I'll see you later. Now, that's not necessarily a shitty friend. That's a friend that has moved on, got a boyfriend. She wants to move on, have kids, and she's going to work for the rest of – you know, the next 35 years, retire, and then that's the end. Best of luck to you. But you know what? I'm going to be doing my own thing. So there it is, guys. And a lot of you have shitty friends who play – Video games all the time, like Madden, or they collect Nikes and a lot of different shoes, and they speak with a different demeanor, and they uh, gossip, and they complain, and they criticize, and they talk about this, they talk about that. Drop all those people, because they serve you no purpose. You need to be around people who are going to help you professionally. That's how I live the first five lessons. So, with that being said, guys, this was a long podcast. Another one's coming up tomorrow, lesson six through ten, and then, of course, along with what I got to say with lesson six through ten. So, that will be live also. So, thank you so much for tuning back in to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. And as always, this is your host, Arsenio, over and out. <laughs>